Mary and I enjoyed our trip to San Antonio. It was a very good lectureship. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the speakers that spoke while I was missing. Wayne just read to us about the blessed man. As members of the world, we often in a trite and flippant manner talk about the blessings we have and we never consider the source or the cost of such blessings. Our unseemly ignorance of the source of our blessings leaves most of us unresponsive in our thanksgiving. We seem to have no respect today for the members of the armed services who have given their lives for our country's freedom. We have no respect for our parents, the ones that sacrificed so many of their own blessings that they might have something to give to us. And least of all, we have no respect for the Almighty God who provides every spiritual blessing that we have in our lives. So many people do not realize how well off and how blessed that they are. Many people are looking for happiness today. Remember that Western song that says, In all the wrong places. How true it is. They always are looking in the wrong places for happiness today. Most people search for happiness because they realize that the world is full of people who are miserable just like themselves. In the New Testament, in the Greek, the word is mekaros. Mekaros. It is used to describe the state of spiritual and moral prosperity. What we call blessedness. Blessedness is the highest possible happiness that a man can enjoy. It carries with it the idea of being well off, thriving, prosperous, in good condition. This happiness is not according to the world's view of happiness but according to the ethics of Christ. So when you're reading and you run across that word, makaros, think about the blessings that you have. You know, there are two reasons for so much misery in the world today, especially here in America. People believe that by looking for lasting joy in material possessions and worldly pleasures, they will find happiness here on earth. This morning in Bible class, we were talking about riches and those people who, with one eye, seek to get all the riches that they can, considering only the fact that money to them would be a blessing. Not looking at any other blessings that are available. You know, people believe that by looking for lasting joy and material blessings and worldly pleasures, they will find their happiness here on earth. They never give any consideration whatsoever to Acts 17, 27 and Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for Him and find Him, though He is not far from each one of us. They don't even consider the Lord, and He is right at hand for each and every one who will take His hand and be led along the path that he would take you. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. That's all there is in this life. Fear God and keep his commandments. You do this and you will have eternal life with the Son of God forever. Such commands as these two have never crossed the mind of those who are out there struggling in misery, 
because they never read them with the intent to understand them. Most of them don't even dust the covers of their Bible off. But you know, God gives us the secret to happiness. We can know what it is. We can find them in the Beatitudes of Matthew 5. We can find them in the Psalms and we can find them in the Proverbs. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That man is blessed who does not do these things. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. What a blessed man that is. One who does these things. There is a sharp contrast between the two extremes. The righteous way and the wicked way. Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who will go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few who will find it. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Which way are you on? We're all on one way or the other, either the narrow way or the broad way. We have a choice that we have to make. He who is not with me is against me, and he, does not get, he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Matthew 12, verse 20. You know, if we want to have a blessed eternal life, we're going to have to choose the Lord's way because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Remember what he said in Matthew 7 verse 14? Few find it. Few will find it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's what we want to find. That's the end result of life, is to dwell with Him, not in Hades with Satan and his minions. So what is blessed? I mean, truly blessed. When we say blessings, you know, everybody walks around saying, well, have a blessed day. But is that what they really mean? It's a flippant remark. Something that they're not really taking seriously. So we're not talking about the generic general view of happiness. That calm, good feeling that you have when all is going well in your daily life. When no pro problem is pressing you at the moment. I want to know and talk about the greatest possible happiness that you could possibly have. In all circumstances in your life. What I mean is that I want to talk about the inner peace, the full assurance, the bold confidence, the calm and serenity that comes from a faithful, loving, merciful God. It's the only source we can get it. These are the things that a truly happy man has. And having this peace and assurance and confidence and serenity we can have a good conscience. 1 Peter 3, verse 21, there is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. Meaning obedience to His Word through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We can have that good conscience. We can be obedient to the Word of God as He asks us to do. Also, God's care. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to His purpose. If you're a happy person, you're in the care of God. And all things will work together for your good. You have his word on that, Romans 8, verse 28. And you will produce the fruits of the Spirit. 
Those that are listed in Galatians chapter 5 call love and joy, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of these things, there's no law against them. These are the things that will bring you happiness and love. What is love? especially towards your neighbor. What is love? If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That's the love we're to have for all men, to live peaceably with them as much as possible. Sometimes with some people it is not possible. But that should not affect our happiness. If we are living peaceably with all men, we will be happy. And that's the kind of happiness that we're looking for. Romans 12, verses 18 through 21 describes that. And we have hope, according to Hebrews 6, verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor for our soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence of the veil. You know, when we're in Christ, we have an anchor, we have a hope, and we will not lose our mooring with him as long as we believe and trust and follow his commands. We also have joy in trials in our happiness. This hope we have. And brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That's what James tells us in James 1, verses 2 and 3. We have hope and we have joy in our trials. And we can have peace in our hearts and in our minds. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind through Jesus Christ. If we are in Him, we can be at peace even though the world is in turmoil around us. Even though everything is being destroyed around us, we can still have peace in our hearts and in our souls. Remember Paul and Silas, Acts 16, verse 25? They found themselves in a situation in which they were not only chained to the walls in prison, but they were in an earthquake as well. And what do we find them doing? They were happy, they were singing, and they were praying. They had that inner peace and happiness that we can seek for. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Talk about a happy soul. No matter what the circumstances were, they were happy. They had the peace that they needed. In this situation, we can see that adverse conditions or circumstances do not take away from the joy of the blessed man. And truly, each and every one of us here is blessed. A godly man will be blessed in all people, in all times, and in all conditions. No one can take that joy from us. He will possess the character that is described in the Psalms about the blessed man. So all people in all times can have this character. We do need not lose this character no matter what we're doing. What are we not to do? He tells us very simply, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. What does that mean? Beware lest anyone cheat you through through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. In other words, watch out for false teachers. Colossians 2 verse 8, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Walk not in the counsel of the world, those who do not know God. Keep yourself pure and holy and righteous in the eyes of God. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, verse 2. 
You know, there are many things out there that the world will tell you that you can do. They will guide you, they will counsel you in the ways of the ungodly. We know that these things are forbidden by the word of God. Some things are acceptable to the world, but they are forbidden by the Bible. Some of them are immodesty, divorce, abortion, homosexuality, women leaders in the church, social drinking, fun worship. That seems to be the thing today. Everything must be fun in worship. And if you don't like where you're worshiping, go somewhere else. Nor stand in the path of sinners. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Why would you want to stand in the path of sinners? Titus 2 verse 11. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. That's what it tells us in Romans 6 verses 1 through 5. Certainly we should not do that. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 11 gives us guidance and direction that we should be looking at. Nor set in the seat of the scornful. Even the everyday talk of the world is scornful and sinful. The Bible says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. If you don't do these things, you will be a much happier individual. Well, what must you do? Do what's according to Psalms 1 verse 2. But in his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law he meditates day and night. Spend your time studying the word of God. 1 Peter 1 verses 20 and 21. For he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these light times for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that you have, that your faith and hope are in God. If you have your faith and hope in God, surely you will be a blessed man, most assuredly. It tells us in 2 Timothy 3, verses 15 through 17, that all scripture is given to us by the inspiration of God. So the more we study, the more blessed and the more happy that we will become. Because we know, one, that he was foreordained before the foundation of the world, and two, God has inspired these scriptures. And three, the things which Paul writes, he says, they are commandments to you from the Lord. These things are from the mind of God and they will bring happiness to you in your mind and bring peace in your life. For this reason, we thank God without ceasing because you received the word of God which you heard from us and you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God which also effectively works in you who believes. The more time that you spend in the scripture, the more it can work on your life and bring you happiness and peace. And you need to delight in those meditations. And we do delight in them. Can they say about you that you meditate on the scriptures when people look at you? You know, there are many people today who seldom read it, if ever. They never dust the covers on their Bibles. Christians today seem to be totally unfamiliar with what the scriptures have to say. They can't remember from one lesson to another what was taught. Not only do they not try to set a time to study, they neglect the opportunity 
that they have to study. Would that be you and I? Surely I hope not. Be the light. Be an example for all of those people who are around you, especially those of your household. My son, give heed to your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Hear the word. Develop it. Develop the necessary faith in the word of God. And you'll be confessing that Jesus is the Son of God. You will know in your heart that He is. And you can be a part of Him. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. We need that fruit of the Spirit so that we can show others how to come to Christ. We need to hunger for the word. We need to learn the necessity of repenting from our sins. We need to be sanctified in the eyes of God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, the desire of the Word to know and study God that you must, if you do study the Word of God, you know that you must be baptized. You must have your sins washed away in order to be added to the church. 1 Peter 2, verses 1 and 2. Laying aside all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking, as newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. These are things that we need to do. What can we say about somebody that truly knows the scripture? One who has become obedient to the word of God. It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth fruit in its season whose leaf shall not wither. He's firmly planted. And he will never faint and he will never fail in his faith. And he will indeed be a blessed man when the Lord says, welcome home. Enter into thy blessings. You know, we need to be giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints according to the light. Because He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Colossians 1, verses 12 and 13. We've been conveyed. We have been transplanted into the kingdom of God. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. We want to make sure that we are not those who are uprooted by studying the Word of God and following what He tells us. You know, these are intentional acts. These are things that we do on our part while God does His part for us. But God be thanked that though you were slaves from sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Obedience. Obedience is a willful act on our part. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Intentional acts on our part that we must do. You know, the ungodly are not so, but they are like chafe which drives in the wind. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. They will fall, Psalms 1, verses 4 and 5. If you're one of the ungodly, have you heard the plan of salvation today? I know that you have an eternal decision to make if you have not. If you desire to be added to the church, now's the time. The Lord will add you to the church. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing that you may have life in His name. John 20, verse 31. Have you heard the Word of God? Surely you have. But I tell you, no, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You have to repent from your sins. You have to turn away from them. Luke 13, verse 5. Also Luke 13, verse 3. 
without repentance. There is no forgiveness. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You must truly believe enough to confess to men that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that God raised him from the dead, knowing full well that he can also raise you from the dead. Romans 10, verse 10. There is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism. Without baptism we're all lost. Because that's where we contact the blood of Christ that washes away our sins. It's not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. That good conscience being obedience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3 verse 21. If you know and believe these things, the invitation is yours. And now is the time for you to respond to that invitation.